Hello everybody, this is Michelle Fox and welcome back to The Simple Quilter. This is video number two in my new series titled Quilt Room Organization. The quilt behind me is one that I made using the Log Cabin Trim Tool 2 and I made a video that showed you how to make the blocks. In the description below I will include a link to that video as well as a link to where you can purchase that ruler. Now today I want to share two resources with you that I have been using in my new approach to keep my quilt room clean and organized. And for those of you who haven't seen my first video, when I talk about my new approach, it's just an approach that I am going to use because my thought is I want to keep my quilt room organized and clean on an ongoing basis. I don't want to have to stop and clean it for several days and, or weeks and then it return into the state that it was before. So my approach is really an ongoing approach to managing the clutter and disorganization in our quilt rooms. The first resource I want to share with you is a book written by Dana White. And in her book, she focuses on viewing her house, the rooms in her house, the um, closets and cabinets, and anything that holds her belongings in each room as containers. And she focuses on trying to keep each container under control. And I really do like that approach. I think that's a good approach. And then she has a process for decluttering. And the first step in that process is to define your space. So for example, this is my quilt room and today we'll be taking a look at my workspace within my quilt room. Then she, her next step is to get rid of the trash. And then her third step is the decluttering process and that basically is to decide what it is you truly want to keep. The second resource that I wanted to share with you is a book written by Kendra Adachi and it's titled The, La the Lazy Genius Way. Embrace what matters, ditch what doesn't, and get stuff done. And in her book she has basically 12 principles and I'm not going to list all those principles because I'm only focusing on a few of the principles mentioned within her book. And I want to share five of those with you. The first one is to start small. And that's really what I've done. I'm not going to take, again, two or three weeks to declutter my room, go through every single thing in it. I am starting small. When I've approached it the other way, it is such a wreck, as you all know. No, I'm sure your rooms have gotten into terrible states. It's just too overwhelming for me. And I'm trying this approach not only in my quilt room, but in other areas of our house. So the first principle is, again, to start small. The second principle that she mentions in her book is just make a decision. And when you're deciding what to keep, or what areas you want to work on, or whatever the decision is, you make that decision once. And then you just stick with it. You just move on. Her third principle is to ask yourself, how can I make this easier? So as I'm working on the areas in my quilt room, and I'm identifying problem areas, and I will be showing you some of those problem areas and how I apply these principles in just a little bit, but how can I make this easier? Or if I have a routine in my quilt room, how can I make that, e that routine easier? Now the fourth principle is one that I really, really am trying hard to focus on. And that is building routines and habits that maintain an organized space. And that is perhaps the most difficult for all of us. And then her fifth principle is to put everything in its place. So as I've been cleaning up my quilt room, I am trying to have a designated place for everything. And in my first video, I showed you some of those designated spaces that I already did have in place. Okay, so now I just wanna take 
some time to show you some of the problem areas I've identified in my quilt room and some solutions I have and show you how the strategies I just mentioned are being applied to these areas. Okay, so the first space I wanted to show you is really my immediate workspace. And let me just show you what I think some of the problems are. Number one, I have three lamps here and I have one on my sewing station. And I kind of have this thing about light. It never seems like I have enough. But the one on my cutting station is new and I think it might help solve some of this. So I'll have to kind of take some away and then see if I have enough light. My second issue is I have too many cords. I have cords everywhere. I have this one that comes out of my TV. I hook this into my computer so I can project everything up there. I've got ooh, a terrible mess of cords back here. Just a jumbled up mess. I've got a charger here. But I have a charger back here, too. I've got two different mice, one for each computer. This is my old computer. Let's see. Oh, I've got a dirty Kleenex. Um, just stuff that's out of place. Pins, I've got two cups, one from yesterday, one from today. I have paper clutter here. I usually don't have my iPad here, but it's sitting here today. Oh, there's my camera cap. I've got a couple of cords over here. I don't even know what that one's for. Uh, there's a cord here. Oh, I don't know what that goes to either. So I just have all these cords and I have some paper clutter. Just, I really need to tidy up this area. But my biggest thing is I need to get rid of some of these lamps and I need to do something with the cords. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to get rid of some of the lamps. I'm going to see if I can get rid of some of these cords. So I'm going to work on cleaning that up. I'm going to deal with my little paper mess there. Take my cups away. I'm going to um, put up my battery, my extra battery charger. And I think I can put my portable drive away. And I'm going to check out these two other cords. I'm not sure where they are or where they go. Uh, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to take my iPad back to my room. And then I'm going to show you what it looks like after I've done that. So the strategies that I've used from the two books are to get rid of the trash. And that was the old computer, my dirty Kleenex. Put things where they go. So I took the paper work where it needed to go. I put the cups away. I put the extra camera stuff back in the cabinet. And I got rid of the extra lamps. Okay, so you can see it was easy to apply those some of those strategies to this area. And now I just need to create a good habit of keeping it clean. And a routine of when I am sewing or working in here that when I'm finished, I put things away. Okay, my next problem area is this corner. And this is a problem because I just usually throw bags on the floor in this corner. So I just really need to take care of each of these bags. And I can tell, let me see. Okay, at a glance I can tell one is a work bag and I just need to get that out of here and get that back to work. And one is my bag that I travel with to retreats and the other two I think just have miscellaneous stuff in them and I need to go through there and get rid of that. Okay so what I'm going to do here I'm going to take that work bag out and put it in my car. I'm going to find a home for my retreat bag and I'm going to clean out those other two bags. I'm going to empty them up and I'm going to put them away. So I've got this area cleaned up. It looks like I need to sweep the floor now, but the first thing I did was to go through the bags and see what was in each of those. And there was a lot of trash in some of those. I had a lot of scraps and stuff in those, so I got rid of that. I put 
One of them was full of mask making stuff, so I put that stuff away. And then the empty bags I put in my closet. I have a bag there that holds all of my empty bags. And then I had my travel retreat bag sitting out here, and that's always sitting out because I don't have a designated space for it. But this is my Tudo rolling travel case that I used to put my machine on when I go on retreats, and that was just sitting empty. So I just put my travel retreat bag in there. Now how cool is that? Now I will definitely know where it is. The case was empty, now it serves another storage purpose and it helps solve that problem of not having a designated place for that bag. The biggest thing that I have to do in this area is to establish a good habit and routine of not tossing bags in this corner. Now in this area of my quilt room, I wanted to show you how to apply the principle that Kendra Adachi talks about in her book of asking yourself the question, how can I make things easier? Now, I love this little cart, but I have to move it almost every single time I do videos. And when I move it, these bottles and lint roller are always falling onto the floor. So I'm like, what can I do to keep that from happening and make this process of videoing a little bit easier? So I found this little container and it has tall sides so I knew that it would help keep things from falling out. I wasn't sure if it would fit but it does fit great in this space. So I just put all these bottles and my lint rollers right there and it fits perfectly into that space. So that's an easy way to apply her principle. Another example that I wanted to revisit was my magazine rack that I showed you in my last video. Now, since I filmed my last video, I found tons of magazines, quilt magazines, scattered throughout my house. They were on my nightstand, they were on my dresser. I had a bag full of them that I had already removed from the corner over there. And then I also had three small little magazine holders in the living room that all had quilt magazines. And as I thought about what was the root of that problem, the root of the problem was I was simply storing the magazines. Some of those magazines were from 2012 and I had never looked at them or revisited them or used them for anything. So I applied Dana White's strategy of getting rid of the trash and I did take those all to the recycle center yesterday. I also am going to apply her strategy of keeping the magazine rack under control, making every all the magazines that I have fit in that container and if they begin to spill out then I have to again work on creating those habits that keep that area free of clutter and keep it under control and not letting it spill over to other parts of my quilt room or even other rooms in my house. Now I did come up with another solution for how to make that easier. One possible solution is that I could just use or read the digital copies that come with each quilt magazine subscription. So I, and if I want to renew those, which I'm not sure I want to now, is I will just tell them that I just want the digital version. So that will just keep the magazines from even coming into the house to begin with. And since I do love to read and I do look at magazines, my quilt friends oftentimes will give me stacks of magazines and I have to work on creating those habits of looking through the magazines, taking out articles I want, put them in the three ring binder that I showed you in my last video, and then getting rid of those magazines, either taking them to the recycling center or passing them on to other quilt friends. So I hope these tips will help you in managing your quilt space and keeping it organized, decluttered, and clean. If you enjoyed today's video, 
please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I love getting comments, so feel free to leave a comment below. I, I usually tell you what's in my next video, but again, I am undecided. So until next time, have fun quilting.